Praxis Prepper. Everybody, this is Praxis, and I'm coming up on day 666 of working on my homestead project. My homestead project that's supposed to, uh, you know, protect and insulate myself and my family from crises, including pandemics and, you know, any number of other emergency situations. I've been working on it for a long time. I hope when I get to day 666, it's not as beastly a day as the number promises. Uh, but even just the, the uh, the number of days that I've put in on this, I know puts me ahead of a lot of, you know, you guys out there. Uh, and even beyond 666 days, I, you know, I've probably been laying the groundwork for the last thousand days to get this project to where it is today and where it's, you know, where it's headed. I know that that can be really daunting to a lot of people that are not as far along uh, on this process, on this journey as, as I am. Uh, but this video is about the idea of whether or not it's too late. There are plenty of videos on YouTube out there that advertise it's too late. You've already, you know, missed the boat. You know, it's just you can't catch up at this point. We're already in an emergency situation. It's too late. I've done videos with that title, but the point of my videos with that title is always the idea that if you're thinking it's too late, you're always wrong because there's always something that you can do. And that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. If you are just starting out in the process, you haven't been working for 666 days or a thousand days or even a hundred days uh, to try to get yourself into more of a, a preparedness mindset, it more into a uh, situation of self-sufficiency. If you're just starting out on the process, that's not reason to lose hope because what you do with your time today, right now, right this minute, right this hour, uh, can have a big impact on your future. Whenever I get into a situation where there's a, a big problem in front of me, I always think to myself, well, what's the, what's the most important thing that I can do right now? What's the most helpful thing that I can do right now to s help solve this problem? And one of the easiest ways of answering that question is to break the problem up into pieces. You know, maybe someday you would like to have worked a thousand days and have your own homestead that can support yourself and your family. But just because you maybe aren't there now and maybe, you know, are a thousand days away from a goal like that doesn't mean that you can't get yourself into a better situation. So let's break the problem of emergency preparedness, uh, disaster preparedness, break it down into pieces. And you know, one of the great ways of looking at that are what are the things that you need? You know, you need air, you need water, you need food, you need shelter, you need safety and security. Probably in just about that order. So let's start with the first one. You know, if you had a situation where the air was not safe to breathe. Maybe during the pandemic, that might be, uh, you know, <laughs> one of the issues that we're dealing with right now. What, are, what is a way that you could rectify that situation, whether it's pandemic disease or wildfires, lots of smoke, if there's nuclear fallout? You know, having respirators, masks, and thing, things of that nature can help you to, you know, solve that problem. That's a, a small solution that you can work on right now today. Now, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you have to bulk up and have, you know, thousands of these things. Just having some... Uh, quantity of respirators for yourself and your family can be a lot better than having zero. I think a lot of people found that out at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, other things, water. Having the ability to get fresh, clean water for yourself and your family is really critical. Uh, you know, having a even something as simple as a camping filter that where you can take some polluted water and run it through a, a camping filter, you can kind of pump it through manually. That's not as wonderful as having, you know, some kind of like a solar run, self-dedicated uh, you know, water filtration system that's gonna, you know, create you know hundreds of gallons for you. But it, as opposed to having no water at all, just being able to filter a little bit of water can make a huge difference if you're thirsty and you want to be able to drink water and not make yourself sick because the water around you, for whatever reason, might be polluted. Maybe there's been a hurricane. Maybe the uh, water lines have been, uh, you know, contaminated with, you know, sewage. Who knows what could happen, but if you have the ability to purify water, that's huge. And there are so many ways of doing that. You can look at any, it doesn't have to be my channel. It can be any preparedness channel. There are a lot of solutions out there. Same with food. If you want to have food when you are hungry, it's good to have some of it kicking around. You know, if you can't get out to a grocery store because there's a, a storm, there is, you know, civil unrest, the grocery stores maybe have run out of food for whatever reason, it's good to have food in your house. And you don't have to, uh, uh, amass food for a year. You can just get yourself food for a couple of days. Now, I know that's a pittance and that sounds like, well, that doesn't really solve much of a problem. But if you're facing a situation where 
You, there's an emergency situation and you could either have zero food or at least enough food for a couple of days. You know, you can get your thoughts together and then, you know, solve the next week after that. Isn't having enough food for a couple of days better than not having any food at all? Now don't stop there. Once you get enough food for a couple of days, think about having enough food for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years. It depends on, you know, your uh, preference of where you want to stop along that continuum. But the idea is that it is a, it is a continuum. Yeah, it's not all or nothing. It's not that you either have three years worth of, uh, you know, freeze-dried food or you might as well have nothing at all. There are plenty of uh, people out there that are going to tell you that if you can't do everything, you might as well do nothing at all. And I think that's terrible advice, uh, no matter what the, the circumstance is. Let's move on from food and think about shelter. You know, it, having uh, the ability to keep yourself dry, keep yourself warm, I think those are really important things. And if utilities go down, a lot of people's houses don't have the functional capacity to keep themselves warm within their own home. How can we solve that? You can install a wood stove in your house. You can install uh, like a generator that could at least run your heaters. Now the generator is going to run out of fuel at some point, but having the ability to keep your house warm for a couple extra days, that's better than it freezing today if you're facing an emergency today. Beyond that, there are safety and security kind of concerns and depending on your jurisdiction, there are different answers to that question. But the point of this video isn't that uh, there are specific things that you need to do. The idea is that you should do something. And even if you are not someone that has been working for the past 666 days or a thousand days on a project, doesn't mean that all hope is lost if there's an emergency situation in front of you. So as soon as this video finishes, think about what you want to do with your next hour. You have that option. You could go and watch you know, dogs riding around on Roombas or cats riding around on Roombas on YouTube. You can spend it to your fam with your family. That's a wonderful thing that you could do. But you could also spend some of that time thinking ahead about how to protect yourself and your family from an emergency situation. And putting in just a little bit of time and a little bit of effort right now can make a huge, huge difference in the future. Just as a quick thought experiment, we've all gone into this pandemic and myself and my family we're still rolling in N95 masks because I've had them for years and years. I've made videos uh, prior to the pandemic suggesting maybe you should have some of these. Uh, wouldn't it have been nice if you would just set aside a little bit of money and a little bit of time ahead of the pandemic and grab that for yourself? Think about how that would have felt if you had uh, invested that small amount of money because you could buy N95 masks, the kind that you cannot get today. You could buy them for a couple of bucks a mask you know, back before any of this started. And the same is true is true, and is going to be true of all sorts of things that you have at your fingertips, literally or figuratively, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, there are so many things that are really easy to get for yourself and your family that in the future may not be. So spend some time today thinking about what are the, my needs? How can I address those needs if I'm not getting those needs addressed by, you know, the civilization by the culture around me because you know there's an emergency situation services have broken down what are those things that I would like to have in the future and get some of those things for yourself because it's really easy to get a lot of this stuff right now before an emergency just uh, the same way it was really easy and really cheap to get N95 masks before the uh, the pandemic the same is going to be true of food water access do some thinking now what are you going to do with your next hour that's it thanks for watching this episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.